So, what do you have here? All on the same scale are three rockets. Well, uh, two rockets and a space shuttle. The guy in the middle is the Saturn 1B. Um, the guy, this guy is the Saturn 5, that's the Saturn 1B, and that's the space shuttle. They're all on the same scale, so it's 144th scale. And the real purpose of doing this is to show you how this guy could actually keep you alive for about a thousand years by more or less the same reaction that can kill you in less than a minute. And indeed, it's what killed three of the, the astronauts of Apollo 1 in just about that, less than a minute. And it all boils down to what fuels these rockets is basically the same thing that fuels your body, especially the first stage of the Saturn V. This ran on liquid oxygen and kerosene, essentially oil. And so there's a tank of oil at the bottom and a tank of liquid oxygen here. And this thing took uh, about a million litres. This is what a, a single litre of liquid oxygen would look like. So the colour's about right. The volume is about right, and the mass is about right. It weighs about one kilo. This is so density of liquid oxygen is very similar to that of water. Uh, the only difference, of course, is liquid oxygen's about minus 150 or something. Liquid oxygen is very cold, and the other thing it runs on, of course, was essentially oil, um, which this 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 is the human equivalent of oil, and. That's not far off what it keeps to keep you alive for a single day. Uh, about uh, 300 grams of oil and a kilo of oxygen. That's one of the first things they actually worked out with the Apollo missions. <laughs> if you want to send someone to the moon in one of these little capsules here, you need to pack enough oxygen for them to live. And that's where they really first worked out that you need about one kilo of oxygen to live per day. Now that's what it looks like in liquid form. In gas form, a kilo of oxygen is about one cubic meter. So just, just for reference, the, the, the big one here, the Saturn V, is about one meter tall. So a cubic meter is roughly how much oxygen you need per day. Now, what the Saturn V does, of course, is it, it burns that very quickly. Indeed, this thing had, like I was saying, it was, it's a million liters of liquid oxygen which is about a thousand tons. A um, thousand tons is about uh, 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters is about the amount of liquid fuel that was in this thing. And if you think about it, a million liters. It's a million of these guys. And one of those will keep your life for a day. So just the oxygen in this would keep you alive for a million days. Now, maybe a simple way to convert that into into years is that if you if you need a, a kilo of oxygen per day, that means you need about 300 kilos of oxygen to live per year. Which is one. This is one of these incredible things about people: is just in one year, you actually consume about three times your body weight in oxygen. You excrete it again, of course, but. Um, so you, you use about a third of a tonne of oxygen per year, which means in about three years, you use about one tonne of oxygen, which is about the mass of a, a medium-sized car. So a thousand tonnes of oxygen, the, just the oxygen in the Saturn V would keep you alive for about 3,000 years. Um, or to look at it another way, <laughs> To produce the same amount of energy as this first stage of the Saturn V, you would have to use the same energy as your body produces in about 3,000 years. So it's really quite a phenomenally impressive machine when you look at it. But it, So our atmosphere is made up of oxygen and nitrogen. In fact, it's made up of about 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. So if I were to have whatever, five one litre bottles here, um, and this was liquefied from our atmosphere, four of them would be nitrogen, and one of them would be oxygen. That's basically our, our oxygen environment, and, or the amount of oxygen in our environment. Now, with the Saturn 1B, to 
they have it set up this way for a couple of reasons. In fact, the, the whole design of these machines is, is fascinating from start to finish in the they really didn't know what they were doing. Um, yeah, they were very smart people, clearly. But when you look through the design history of these things, um, it, it's fascinating. Yeah, Einstein had this great saying that we wouldn't call it research if we knew what, what we were doing. And this is, what, what you see with these things is essentially the same thing but from an engineering point of view. And so with the, with the Apollo mission, you've got to take your hat off to them that uh, the, the sequential programmer that they had, the testing that they had was, was pretty rigorous. But even at that, they made some pretty fundamental mistakes. So one of them was they pressurized the capsule with pure oxygen. Uh, so like I was saying, our typical atmosphere is only 20% oxygen, and in this first capsule, they had 100% oxygen. Now, most chemists, if they'd talk to them, would say that's absolutely insane. Do you know how well things burn in a 100% oxygen atmosphere? But they actually had, they had a sort of logic to using a 100% um, oxygen atmosphere in here, and that was that um, in one of the earlier tests of I forget where it is, the Mercury or Gemini capsules, uh, they had used a partial nitrogen atmosphere. And of course, once you've got two gases, the thing is you can't smell or taste oxygen or nitrogen. You're just entirely reliant on the capsule having the right composition. And in one of these early missions, they had actually managed to not get enough oxygen into the atmosphere. And as a result, the astronaut passed out um, which would have, you know, had that been mission, of course, they'd have probably all died. So they decided, right, enough of this crap, we're just going for a 100% oxygen atmosphere on the Apollo missions. And we're going to start off with one atmosphere pressure when we launch. And then when we get up into space, we're going to let um, three quarters of the atmosphere out of the capsule. Um, so that means that if you were to take a look at a unit volume of air, it would still have the same amount of oxygen in it. Things would burn comparably well as they would on Earth, but you've just not got the nitrogen there. The nearest equivalent that you can get, it's like going to the top of Mount Everest, where the atmospheric pressure is down to about a third of what it is at sea level. But instead of it being 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, it was 100% oxygen. That, that's about what they had planned for this thing. So the launch is pure oxygen at one atmosphere. Once you get up into space, you vent it out so there's only 0.2 of an atmosphere of oxygen in the capsule. And there, there, there were significant advantages to that. Um, unfortunately, um, things burn insanely well in oxygen, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, and all it took was one little spark of something and there was enough flammable material in the capsule that uh, the whole thing essentially <laughs> becomes like a rocket engine that you've got the oxygen and the fuel and the two burn together and in a confined space like that the, 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 the pressure builds up very quickly and it turns out another design flaw that they had on these things is the doors opened uh, inwards, which basically meant that once the pressure got up because of the fire, it would have been impossible for them to open the door. And so the guys inside, they, uh, they, they actually died long before they were killed by the fire, essentially from carbon monoxide. The, um, the 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 plastic burned to release carbon monoxide and a, um, a few breaths of that and and that that's what will kill you long before you actually die from from burns. So they actually all asphyxiated and the pressure in the capsule got high enough that it burst the capsule. The capsule is essentially a a pressure vessel. It's a sealed metal ball. Um, now of course normally that's to keep keep the atmosphere in. And that's exactly what it did, apart from now all that stuff burning inside and the heat generated from it about doubles the pressure in, in the capsule and it actually burst the capsule, the pressure got so high. 
So that's the story of how uh, um, oxygen was not only the thing that really powered the Saturn V rocket, it's also what killed the first crew of the Apollo mission. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to get a piece of wood and show you what a piece of wood in a normal atmosphere burns like, okay? I'm going to set that on fire and it will burn. It'll burn okay, you know, you get quite a decent flame off that. Now I'm going to turn the oxygen generator on and you let that flush through for a bit. Then we're going to try that again with a high oxygen atmosphere just to give you some idea of just what it would be like to essentially be in a contained metal capsule with a pure oxygen fire. Okay. So. First of all, I'm going to light this. Okay, and then that's what a pure oxygen fire looks like. So even things that you wouldn't normally consider dangerous, like just a little piece of glowing charcoal in, on the end of a stick, this is what it can look like when you actually get it near an oxygen atmosphere. First of all, it starts to flare up and boom, right? It's just and that's just one of the amazing things that you, you, this is actually fairly common chemical knowledge. Um, but the people who were designing these these space vehicles had many considerations. And so while this was obviously seen as a, a a real potential hazard by by chemists, it was it was balanced off against other things. And sadly, three men lost their lives because of that.